the world of golf is huge and fascinating, and Full Swing, the new sport documentary series, is an amazing addition to it. Similar to the popular sports series like Breakpoint for tennis fans, or Drive to Survive for F1 fans, Full Swing is an eight-part series that covers the PGA Tour, revealing the professional and personal lives of the big names in the game. In this guide, we will take you through some of the key points that you might have missed in episode 1, titled Frenemies. This episode covers two best friends and rivals, Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth, and a lot more. So, get ready to discover what you missed and enjoy. Full Swing is a recently released documentary series that has been gaining a lot of attention, especially among golf fans. It's not just because of the hype surrounding it, but because it came just in time to cover the civil war that's currently taking place in the golf world. The breakaway golf tour, Live Golf, is attracting some of the big names in golf, and the players who have joined the Saudi-backed tour are banned from participating in any PGA event. Although there is still a lot to be sorted out, Greg Norman, who is the CEO of Live, has no plans of backing down. Apart from enticing the players with money, Live Golf is bringing in a lot of changes to the game, which is another reason why some golfers are against him. There is also a pending lawsuit against the PGA Tour from some set of golfers that have switched to Live Golf. Besides all the drama, the documentary also highlights luxurious lifestyles like private jets and mansions, providing a glimpse into the world of professional golf. The first episode of Full Swing, titled Frenemies, covers two best friends and rivals, Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth. The episode starts in a private jet, where Spieth is drinking a Bell's Two-Hearted Ale, playing a card game called Guess the Card. Next, they land in Hilton Head, where Spieth wins, and we meet a few other featured subjects who will appear down the road in the first season, such as Rory McIlroy, Matt Fitzpatrick, Colin Morikawa, Dustin Thomas, Sahit Tigala, and Joel Darman. Fitzpatrick says, success this season will be winning on the PGA Tour, but little did he know that he would have some great news coming his way. Dan Rappaport takes some time to talk about the relationship between the two friends, describing JT as Jordan's friend. Justin has been a great golfer with multiple stints atop the world golf ranking and 15 PGA Tour titles including two majors. While watching this episode, the confidence and competitiveness of JT are evident, and he shares some quotes to show how he sees the game. When they asked Justin about the PGA and his relationship with Jordan Spieth, he replied without a single doubt, I know for a fact I can win the PGA Championship. He's one of my best friends, we're always going to pull for each other, but at the same time, I hope that I can beat him in every single tournament that we play in for the rest of our lives, giving us an insight of how Thomas and Spieth's relationship actually is. Throughout the episode, Justin and Jordan's close friend Ricky Fowler appears from an interview Netflix did with him, where he describes their friendship, but also confirms the competitiveness between them all. You do get a sense of satisfaction when you see a friend succeed and play well, Fowler says, but there's also kind of an underlying kick in the butt, like I don't want to see him beat me, I want to go beat him. Another interesting aspect of this episode is the timing of Netflix's coverage. The episode was based on the week of the PGA Championship at Southern Hills, where JT dramatically secured his second Wanamaker trophy and second major title. The episode also features some insights into JT's golf game. JT is known for his aggressive approach and competitiveness. He is a master at working the ball and is an excellent putter. These skills are on full display in the episode as he navigates the tricky course at Southern Hills. While JT is undoubtedly a fantastic golfer, the episode shows that he is not infallible. He struggled with allergies during the tournament and he fell away on Saturday, leaving himself seven strokes behind. Here's a funny clip where he heads into a local CVS pharmacy to buy some medicine. While in the store, he struggles with a self-service machine in a way we can all relate to. On his way out, he passes a fan who wishes him luck for the week, with the fan unaware that he had just passed and wished luck to the guy who would be winning the PGA Championship later that week. Falling seven strokes behind led to a great quote by him. This sport is freaking brutal. How quickly you can fall off and just not be who you were anymore. His dad and coach Mike Thomas also comes out with a great quote. I know he knows he might cost himself a serious chance at this tournament, but we can't do anything about what happened today. All we can do is what we're going to do tomorrow. This episode actually reveals a lot about the relationship between Mike Thomas and his son, Justin Thomas. Mike Thomas is JT's dad and coach, and he offers some of the most affectionate scenes when he speaks about how tough his own father had been on him as a kid and how badly it hurt. He vowed never to treat his own kids like that, and there's irony here because that very week, Justin Thomas said in a press conference that he wants his dad to be harder on him at times, to press him more. 
I get pissed at him sometimes. He's not going to go full Butch Harmon or Pete Cowan and tell me I suck. But Mike has his own perspective on what that can do to someone's psychology. And as this episode goes along, it becomes abundantly clear that he's 100% right in the decisions he makes. He's the calm centre who can talk his hot-tempered son off the ledge, and who, at the PGA Championship, cajoles him at a very low moment and gets him back to an emotional place where he at least has a chance. This is the kind of stuff we wouldn't have got without this show. In short, full swing at its best. The episode starts coming to an end when we witness Mito Pereira's heartbreaking final hole collapse resulting in JT's win of his second PGA Championship, closing the gap to Jordan to 3-2 in majors to the Texan. The episode also shows Netflix following Pereira during the tournament, with a hint that his wife was mic'd up in the crowd. This moment is sure to make the Mito episode an epic one. We also see Thomas expressing his desire for the win to last longer so that he could enjoy it more, indicating the temporary nature of triumph. The episode gives insight into what matters to these players and what gets their juices flowing. We also hear Thomas talk about how Speed's early success almost made him angry and Fowler discussing the strangeness of competing against friends every week. While the episode may be a bit slow, the following episodes are way more intriguing, covering more of the Live Golf drama and featuring players stating their reasons for joining the Saudi backed tour. Live Golf was not featured much of the first episode of Full Swing. There's a bit on last year's champion Phil Mickelson not being there to defend his title, and some press conference clips from the PGA Championship. A little was also said about the breakaway tour in the intro. We also get to see the world number two standing strong with the PGA Tour, and advising other high profile players to think before joining Live Golf. The show also gives us a glimpse into the personal lives of the players, such as Joel Darman, whose wife reveals is suffering from cancer. Overall, the Full Swing series is a fascinating look into the world of professional golf, with intriguing storylines and personal insights into the lives of the players. What do you think about episode 1? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.